Hi gorgeous, this is episode number 102 with one of the global leadership gurus, Dov Barron. Hi, this is Dov Barron. You are listening to Heart Cells Podcast with Christine Solonsky. Enjoy. I'm so excited I get to talk to Dov Barron today. He is a man with a finger on the pulse of the evolving world of next-gen leadership. So before we dive in, make sure you hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab and download your personal anniversary issue, which we put together with 100 podcast episodes, all the titles, all the guests and the key points so that when you look for inspiration, motivation, empowerment, or you just want to be uplifted and listen to a certain episode, you can just go to the anniversary issue and get it right out of there so you know where to tune into, who to listen to for great, great advice and which guests you would love to go to for a certain topic. So today I'm so excited that Dov actually said yes to be interviewed on Heart Sales Podcast. And he is really one of the top 30 global leadership gurus. He is also cited at the Inc. Magazine top 100 leadership speakers to hire and also cited in the meeting and event professional guide to the top 100 motivational speakers and named as one of the top 30 global leadership gurus. He has several best-selling books. His latest book is Fiercely Loyal, How High-Performing Companies Develop and Retain Top Talent. He's also the host of the national US TV show Pursuing Deep Greatness with Darth Barron on Roku TV. And he's a host of a number of podcasts for 500 Fortune listeners globally, Darth Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Show. So I'm so happy you are here and tuning in because you're going to learn a ton. So let's get started. Well, I am so happy to have you here on the show today, Darth. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to serve you and the audience and have a good time. Yes, definitely. That's one of the most important things that maybe that takes a learning curve to get that, that it's about the good time and not about making it more difficult than it needs to be. Yeah, I think that uh, one of the great challenges we face is that we take ourselves way too seriously. We take what it is we're doing too seriously. I mean, I think we're all, we've all been guilty of it, but the truth of the matter is um, you, are, you are much more likable. You, I, we are much more likable if we are having fun and people want to buy from people who are fun, people want to buy from people they connect to. And, you know, that, that joy exchange between two people brings them together. So I think if you come at people with a, you know, I'm an intense guy, I'm a very intense human being, but I'm also intensely playful. And I think that that's an important combination, particularly for somebody who is intense. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. And you are, as we just said at the beginning, one of the top. 30 global leadership gurus. So from Whatever my that means. <laughs> and correctly, is like you need to like you need to master yourself. You need to lead yourself first before you can lead others. So can yeah. you take us a little bit down that path? Like what happened that enabled you to become the person you are today? That's a big, that's a big question. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, as I said, I don't think it's possible to genuinely lead another until we, until we lead ourselves. Yeah. Uh, um, and I know that that, because I've been on the other side of that, meaning that I was leading people when I hadn't fully led myself. And it's easy to take on the role, to take on the title, to take on the status of being a leader, but actually being one, demands a high level of not only emotional intelligence, but self-knowledge. And what I mean by that is, until we look at the de very darkest parts of ourselves, um, as you suggested there, back in 1990, I was very successful. It probably the most successful I'd been up until that point. I'd already been speaking for about six years at that point. 
and it had businesses in three continents and I'd done pretty great. And on a particular day in June, 1990, I was uh, visiting a place just just outside of Whistler, British Columbia, which is where the 2010 Olympics were held. This was of course, 1990. So a long time before that. And I was visiting this place called Brandywine Falls. And it's a magnificent glacial waterfall that's so beautiful. And the water winds down off the glacier. And as it comes down, it plummets off the edge of a cliff for 200 feet. And it is spectacular to watch. And uh, my buddy and I decided to hike down to the bottom to look at it, not from the the, uh, viewing area, but to hike to the bottom. We got to the bottom and I challenged my buddy that we should try and hike behind the waterfall facing this 70 mile an hour spray, which is what we did. Uh, crazy as it was, uh, stupid across slippery rocks and a 70 mile an hour spray. But when I came out on the other side, I felt like Superman because all the negative ions, I was totally charged. And I said to my friend, again, I was an adrenaline junkie, crazy person. And I said to my friend, let's not uh, hike back up. Let's climb the face. So this is a mountain face. And, uh, You know, mountain climbing can be dangerous, but you've got your ropes and you've got your safety lines and you've got a climbing partner and all the rest of it. And free climbing can definitely be crazy because you don't have ropes and you don't have safety lines, but what you have is the right gear, you have chalk and a a climbing partner. We had none of the above and I was soaking wet. Mm. And at about 120 feet, which is 12 stories, I reached for a rock. That rock dislodged a bigger rock that, bam, hit me in the face and sent me hurtling down at maximum velocity onto the boulders below that smashed me to pieces. And it was, you know, pretty gruesome, and I can go into the gory details, but I won't. Um, What I will tell you is that I was plummeted into not just being broken physically, but broken mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and had to seriously take a look at who I was and come out of denial about many of the things that I had been in denial of. And up until that moment, I thought my life was fantastic and I was on target. And as most people do, but we have these moments and I call them pivotal moments. Sometimes for some people it's a divorce or a bankruptcy or a horrible diagnosis or a car accident or something that is seemingly devastating that makes us stop in our tracks. And if you're like me, which is what most people are at that point, is people always think that's the turning point in your life. No, it's not. That's the point where you become embedded. So my ego dug in deeper and I was like, I'm great. When people say, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm coming back. There is no coming back. Life doesn't work back. It works forward. So there's no coming back. And so I was in denial. Uh, you know, I was born in a ghetto. I'd been a martial artist. I'd been a boxer. I'd been a leader all my life. You know, nothing's going to break me. So I was not going to admit that I was feeling crushed. Mm. And it wasn't until I fell into a deep, dark depression and looked into the self-knowledge that I needed to do in order to lead myself from my purpose, from the inside out. That's what makes the difference. And that's what we have to do. We have to look into the the dark cave, as Joseph Campbell said. Look into the dark cave, because that dark cave is where where we are feared to step into, is where the treasure is. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. And I mean, what what a story. I hope we inspire so many people who, you know, have maybe obstacles that seem compared to that story, like small, but for them, they look like the biggest mountain in the way. And I really hope that we can inspire them to have a look at themselves and to find that treasure within so they can lead in their businesses. Because they all yeah, absolutely a business to to for, for, you know, fulfill their passion and to give their gifts to the world. And then sometimes we get stuck with small things like picking up the phone. Yeah, and, you know, and I want, to, I want to stop you there for a moment because it's easy to look at that and go, oh, well, you know, um, my stuff doesn't count because I didn't fall off a mountain and get smashed to pieces or I didn't get a cancer diagnosis or whatever it is. Hold on, let, let me just, let's, let me encourage you to have some compassion for yourself. Courage is subjective. For some people listening, watching us right now, they're going, you know, picking up a phone, no big deal. But for other people, the anxiety is terrifying for them. 
And please give yourself credit for that. Understand that this is not a small thing. If it's a big thing for you, it's a big thing. Don't compare it to somebody else. So once you get that, that this is a big thing for me, then you can look at what is the small steps for me. Because if you look at Dov and you go, well, you know, he could do this, so I guess I should do this. No, no. Break it down into your small steps. Because listen, you have a gift within you. This is Christine's message. It's why she brings her guests to you. You have a gift within you. You have something to bring to the world. You have a responsibility to bring that. And we can't do that without selling who you are. You need to sell the message that you're trying to bring. And if you do that, if you, if you give in to that fear, which we all have, me, Christine, and everybody who's ever been on the show, right? we all have that fear. If you give in to that, you steal from the world your gift that you're here to give. And you must take the moment to step into that. Now, in saying that, this is not about, da -da, it's about minuscule, tiny, little steps. What can you do today? What is the step you can do today? And you're allowed to take as many small steps as you want. You're just not allowed to never take any step. You have to take a step. I don't care if it's the size of a mosquito, but you must take some small step every single day because success is built on success, incremental success. It's not about giant leaps. The moment will come and you will take a giant leap, but you must do the incremental steps. So please have compassion for yourself. Give yourself breathing space and understand that courage is subjective. Don't judge yourself by somebody else. Judge yourself by you and go, okay, here's what I need to do. I'm going to do this little step today. And then when you do it, this is important, you must celebrate it. Because when you create a courageous step and you celebrate it, that changes the synaptic exchange in your brain. Neurons that fire together wire together. The more you celebrate your successes, the more success you can have. The less you celebrate them, the less success you can have. Every time it's starting from zero unless you celebrate the success. So that's my key takeaway for you on this sim particular subject. Courage is subjective, so take small steps and celebrate every step. Write it down and share it with one person, at least one person. Write it down, and you can't butt it. Okay, you can't go, well, I did this, but. No, no, there's no but. One small step, celebration, write it down, notarize it, share it with no buts, and then at the end of every day, you look at your successes. The end of every week, you review the week. At the end of every month, you review the month. And you'll start wiring your brain for greater and greater and greater successes. And that's when you can actually go, oh, I can do the quantum leap. Yeah, I, I just love this because so often we have the feeling that other people are overnight success. And that's <laughs> so not true, right? And we know that. There's no like, such thing. Know. The first time for me picking up the phone, you know, my hand was shaking, my heart was beating. I don't even know if it had ever beaten that fast, but you know, it was like one step after the next step, as you just described. So I would love for the listeners to be encouraged to whatever is in the way to take those first steps to act now, because if you don't act now, then there might not be a tomorrow. So it's always good to take a step each and every single day. Yeah, and as I said, it doesn't have to be a big one. Make it a yeah. small one. Yeah, like, and don't I love set the gigantic goals. Yeah, I love the celebration piece because for me, that was a huge, difficult thing to learn. Not to uh, attaching yeah. a but. Like, yeah, I did that, but, you know, there's a next goal on the horizon. <laughs> so let's concentrate on that. Really stopping and celebrating was something I had to learn, actually. You do. You actually have to learn it. And, and yeah. part of the reason you learn it is because of the societal conditioning, because we're all societally conditioned that you shouldn't be a big head. You shouldn't be a braggart. Now, hold on a sec. Let, let's just get this correct. I want you to think about what celebration means. It means you share it with others, right? You know, mm. oh, you know, and, but think about what do we actually celebrate? We celebrate our failures. We call other people and go, oh, I blew it. I, I made such a balls that I made a mistake. And we, we let everybody know. But when we have successes, we go, oh, it was no big deal. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. You have to celebrate the success. You can recognize the failing. You can learn from the failing. You can acknowledge it. 
but you must celebrate the success. And yes, there will always be a but, but you can't allow it in. You have to say this was the complete step. So, the, yeah, but there's more to do. Absolutely, there's more to do. But it's not a but. That's the next step. This step is complete. What was this step? I pushed the donut away. What was this step? I held the phone, but I couldn't dial. Fantastic, you held the phone. Okay, I dialed, but I hung up. Fantastic, you picked up the phone, and you held it, and you dialed. Rocking. I picked up the phone, held it, dialed the number, and I said, hello. Okay, fantastic. There's no but. Each one is a separate step. Celebrate the step or honor the step. And each time, find somebody to do it with because that will give you more power. Don't say, well, I didn't sell a million bucks. Okay. Okay, you didn't sell a million bucks. But did you do, did you write out what it was? Yeah, but I didn't read it. Didn't ask you, did you read it? Did you write it out? Yes. Fantastic. Celebrate that. Next time, could you commit to saying the first line? Reading the first line. Yeah? Okay. Great. Fantastic. Do that. Okay, did you do the first line? No, I did the first three words. Fantastic. That's only three words. Rocking. But I didn't do a line. I don't care. You did the three words. Celebrate every incremental success. Yeah, I, I love that because we get so hung up in comparison with others mm -hmm. instead of staying in our own lane and compare like, what did we do yesterday? How did we grow? What are we doing today? How are we growing? Absolutely. So I just, I just love that every incremental step is worth a celebration. Thank you so much. It is. And, um, you know, from listening to you and like all the energy you bring to the table, do you ever have a bad day? Of course I do. I'm a human. <laughs> I don't know if you've met these, I don't know if you've met these creatures called humans, but we have <laughs> shitty days. <laughs> what do you do when you have a shitty day? <laughs> um, well, I mean, obviously, I understand because, I, you know, like we talked about, you can't lead another until you lead yourself. So what does leading myself mean? It means self-knowledge. It means that I'm in a constant state of self-inquiry. Uh, what it means is I want to understand what drives me, what motivates me, what, what are the triggers for me. I want to find out all those things. And if I know if I'm having a bad day, it is not for no reason. So that's number one. I start with acknowledging. I'm feeling shit. There must be some reason. But I don't have a reason. I have no right to, to feel bad. I should be grateful. I've got so many things to be grateful for. All that new age chatter goes on inside of our head, and it just becomes more of the same nonsense that doesn't allow us to be present. So I go, no, hold on a second. Forget what I'm supposed to be, that I'm supposed to be energized, that I'm supposed to be grateful. That's all true. So what? But right now, I'm feeling like a bag of poo, so <laughs> let's just go to that. Why? Well, there's no reason. Okay, so here's what I want you to do, and this is what I do to myself. I take out my journal, and I go, I feel like a bag of crap. Why? And then I write, I have no reason. I let myself write what my head's saying. I have no reason. And then I write, but if I did have a reason, what would it be? So I just shift my, if I did have a reason, what would it be? Well. Maybe I just didn't get enough sleep. Okay. See, maybe I'm just having a bad day because I didn't sleep enough. Maybe I'm having a bad day because, oh, yeah, I'm still thinking about that, that disagreement I had with my wife, and I really wasn't very gracious, and, and I'm feeling kind of bad about myself. And I allow myself to go back to the place because if I allow myself to go back to the place, A, then I can ask, well, can I do anything about it? And the answer is usually yes. So what can I do? And the answer is usually something courageous, which means go back and say, you know what? I was a bit of a dick. I'm sorry. I was not the greatest person. I behaved in a way that was less than uh, how I would want to be. Please accept my apology. Here's how I was uh, not gracious. Here's how I was not helpful, whatever it was. And I feel a lot better. And suddenly my day has changed. Or maybe it's something histor historic. Like, I'm feeling bad, but I have no idea why. And if I let myself, well, if I did know why, what would it be? Then I go, oh, hmm, fascinating. I remember watching that movie last night. And in that movie, there was this scene, and I kind of pushed it to the side. But actually, it reminded me when I was a kid. It reminded me of this thing that, you know, 
you know, maybe I haven't dealt with that properly yet. And I begin to journal about it. So I give myself, so here's the key. I don't try and move myself out of it. This is what everybody will tell you to do. Well, just get on, just move, get into a positive space. That's horse crap. Denial is a place in Egypt. Denial, right? Go hang out in denial, swim in denial. But that's not a place to be in your psychology. What you have to be is to be present with, sit in it, be present with it so that you can let it pass over you. If you're in denial of it, you repress it. Depression comes from repression. We enter depression because we repress something. I don't want a depression. I know I used to be severely depressed. I don't want that, so I don't repress. So what I do is I let myself be with it long enough and then say, okay, what can I do now? And then I can take an action. Then I can notice every day, what am I grateful for, which I do every day. What am I grateful for? What do I appreciate? What are the actions I can take today to move me towards my outcome? What is my purpose? Why am I here on this planet? Who am I here to serve? If I don't know that, that's my first question. Why am I here? What are, who am I here to serve? Let me connect to that so that I can serve in a greater way in the world. And one of the things I know is that a lot of that self-destructive thought process is because I'm too engaged with me. I'm not thinking about who I can serve. So I'm not going to be in denial. I'm going to address, but I'm also going to say, okay, I can hover in this place. I can stay stuck in it, which is a downward spiral. I can look at what I can, I can admit it, own it, claim it, see what I can do about it, and then go, okay, how can I serve in the world? And sometimes you feel, you're having a crap day and you just don't feel like you can. You go, okay. So what I say, challenge myself to do is I go, okay, I feel just like I can't serve anybody. So what I'm going to do, again, incremental small things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Starbucks. I'm going to go to Starbucks and get a coffee. Now, I know why I'm going. I'm not going for coffee. I can make coffee in my house. I'm not going for coffee. I'm going to coffee because I have to smile at three people before I get to Starbucks. Eyeball to eyeball, smile at them. Um, and when I get to Starbucks, I have to be very nice and not as in pleasant. I have to be engaging with the person behind the counter. How are you? How was your day? Tell me what was good about your day today. I actually will say that to the, in the uh, oh, you know, somebody's interested in them. And I, I can leave Starbucks going, I touched somebody's life. Suddenly, oh, look, I'm not in such a crappy place anymore. So yes, of course I have terrible days. We all have terrible days. Most of my terrible days don't last more than a few minutes because I deal with them by being present with them first. I don't deny them. I'd be present with them. And then I move on. And then I look at how I can serve. What a, what a great advice. So have you ever had a challenge calling people that you have never spoken to? Or was <laughs> it something you could kind of do naturally? I've always had a problem and still have a problem with it. Right? And I've been doing this for 35 years. My God, 35 years. Now I'm old. I just realized how old I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I still, I mean, you know, because I have a podcast and I interview very famous people and talk to them all the time. No problem whatsoever. You know why? Do you know why it's no problem to interview them? Because it's... I have all the power. Mm. I have the power. It's my interview. I'm in charge. They're coming to me. But when you've got to go to them... And you got to pick up the phone and say, uh, there's something I'd like. <laughs> I think I'm choking on my own heart. Hold on a sec. Right? So, so what I have to do in order to help myself is shift the power dynamic. Because that's all it is. It's a power dynamic. So in my interviews with these, these people, you know, I've interviewed all three of the people behind you in the images behind you on the covers there. They're, um, they're actually all friends of mine or clients of mine. Um, I've interviewed very famous people that other people would love to interview. I n people say, do you get nervous? Never, because I understand the power dynamic. So what you have to do in a sales thing is shift the power dynamic. And the power dynamic is this. In a sales call, the presumption is, I want something you have. So I shift the power dynamic. I have something you want. Yes. That's the shift. And that's how I get over it. I have something you want. So I am looking for what it is you want. And I don't get off the phone until I know what you want. And once I know what you want, 
then I can say, you know what? I have, do not offer that. It's not, that's not what I offer. I, I had a conversation with somebody the other day and they were saying what they wanted. I was like, you know, that is wonderful. It's so not what I offer. But you know what? I can actually introduce you to somebody who does that. But the work that I do is, is deep. We deal with some very, we get down to the nitty gritty. We, we deal with that and we get you connected to your purpose and your organization's purpose. And, you know, that's a, you know, I'm selling a very big ticket item, you know, and if you're looking for a $5,000 $5, item, that's great. I just don't serve that. It's not who I am and it's not what we offer. But let me introduce you to this person because I know from that context that I'm going in to offer something they want. And what that means is I know that they need what I've got. And if they don't need what, even if they don't see that they need what I've got, I know someone who can give them what they need. And so I'm always in this place of looking to serve something they need. The power dynamic shifts as opposed to you've got something I want, which is your money. No, no. I've got something you want that you would pay money for. That's the shift. Yeah, awesome, awesome. And time with you just flies. <laughs> and I'm so happy we have set up another interview. So I would love to invite people to go to fullmontyleadership.com slash gift because you have an amazing gift for them to pick up. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, if you go to fullmontyleadership.com forward slash gift, G-I-F-T, um, when you get to that page, I'm going to give you an opportunity to be able to have one of my books, uh, One Red Thread. Uh, I think I have also put there a Purpose is Missing Piece. So One Red Thread is how to find your purpose as an individual. It's a process. Um, also, I've given you access to one of my e-courses as well. Um, by going there and getting that, you'll also... You know, I'll tell you up front, you'll also be on our mailing list. And the good thing about that is you'll also get first offers on anything else that comes out before anybody else finds out about it. And there's a pile of resources actually throughout that site. There's uh, my videos, my audios. There's over 600 videos, over 600 podcasts, 600 articles. There's a lot of stuff there. So there's all wow. kinds of great resources for you. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. And I'm really looking forward for the next conversation. I am so looking forward to it. Thank you for having me on, Christine. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Well, Dov has such an amazing story of how he overcame obstacles, how he really found his own path, and how he serves at the highest that he can. So Lead Yourself First for me was really, really an inspiration, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Make sure you subscribe to Heart Sales Podcast, and please share it with two of your amazing friends so that they can tune in as well and get all the empowerment and the uplifting information that we are sharing here. Make sure you tune on in for the next podcast with Dav, where we talk about the four things you are really selling. If you have time and you feel like you need more inspiration, hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, get your anniversary issue with all the 100 first episodes of Heart Sales Podcast and their key points to really uplift you, empower you, motivate you, and just tune into more episodes. They're right there at your fingertips when you hop on over to christineschlonsky.com, find the podcast tab and enjoy listening. Thank you so much for being here, for tuning in. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world. And I'm saying bye for now.